Hey everybody, welcome to my new series. Um, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Beginnings um, series telling you little tricks on uh, starting up in the game. Now obviously the first uh, of these videos should probably be deck building, but there are thousands and thousands and thousands of deck building videos out there which all tell you the same thing. Um, so there's not really much point in doing that because I'll just be repeating what people have already said. Um, so instead, I am going to talk about playtesting. I'm going to talk a little bit about why playtesting is important and what I used to do to playtest when I was a bit more uh, competitive and um, sort of how I playtest now, how things have changed as I've got a little bit older. So, why is playtesting important? That's the most important question, I think, to ask in this uh, video. Playtesting is important because obviously it helps you learn to play your deck and it helps you learn to make the most optimal players in a multitude of situations and obviously I think a lot of the better players, a lot of the really really good, oh excuse me, so much gas, a lot of the really really good players play this for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours. Um, well I wouldn't say that was unachievable by a lot of people's standards. I mean, obviously, real life for some people takes over and we've got stuff to do. So, you know, a lot of people can't put in as many hours as you'd like, but I suppose that's one of the, the joys of living in this age. We can now we can just oh, click, click online. There you go. Let's test on DN or Yuga Pro or whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's obviously why playtesting is important because it helps you learn your deck, um, which, you know, is a brilliant thing to do. Um, but also, um, for a lot of newer players, it helps you learn opponent's decks and helps you learn what their lines of play are and you know how to map out the perfect game from whatever deck you're playing against. And that was one of the things that we used to really emphasize on when we were younger, so when we were 15, 16, you know, well, probably through to, up to or coming up to 20 year old. Um, back in the day, we used to be very, very heavy on the playtest. We used to play test almost every day. Um, you know, whether it was at the local library, whether it was at someone's house or whatever. And um, I mean, a lot of the normal, a lot of normal casual play is done. Game ones, you play a lot of game ones. Um, I mean, sometimes they're best of three, but half the time we don't don't ever side deck against each other. Um, unless we want to try something out or prepare for a tournament, as we are right now. Uh, obviously, I'm helping people prepare for Euros. I myself uh, didn't qualify. I've already mentioned the hows and the whys on that one. But uh, I'm not going to stop helping people prepare for Euros. And, you know, going to go to a locals this weekend just to, um, yeah, really sort of help my teammates out with that. So, that's why playtesting is important. It helps you learn your deck. helps you learn your opponent's deck. It also helps you learn what cards work and what cards don't. If you've got a side deck, you've got 15 cards in your side deck to optimize any matchup, and you've got to sort of work out what's going to be good against uh, X, Y, Z deck. And I feel like you need to have some some cards that are dedicated for the best deck, some cards that are dedicated for not not the best deck good decks and then you need to have some cards dedicated for um sort of rogue and anything else but that's another video but also playtesting lets you see what cards work what cards don't work um so yeah now i'm going to talk a little bit about how i used to play test uh, i'm going to try and get all this wrapped up within the 10 minutes so when i was younger as i said i used to do a lot of play testing um and there were two two things that i used to do when i was play testing well, three actually, now I think about it. Yeah, there was three things that we used to do, one of which is sort of carried over. So, the first thing, obviously when you play testing casually, like I say, you do a lot of game ones. So, one thing that we like to do, let me just shuffle the deck, um, is we play the game, but when we draw our cards, instead of drawing to our hand, we draw them in front of us. One, two, three, four, five. And we then can look at our cards and we can be like, okay, cool, so whoever's going first. So you can see your cards, your opponent can see your cards. And 
what you do in this situation, see I was going second, what was I say I was going first? You would look at your cards and go, okay, I've drawn reinforcement army, Shuri, uh, Unicor, Mirror, and Decisive Armor. So the cards I've drawn, obviously, you know, shuffle my deck and whatnot. And then what you would do then is you would explain to your opponent what plays you're going to make and why, whether you're going first or second. And then it helps you by vocalizing what you're going to do, which, you know, triggers whatever memory systems in your brain. You go, you can think back when you're playing the deck in a time and you're like, I'm going to do this, this, this. Oh, yeah, boom, 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 I know what I'm doing. It also helps your opponent. Now, obviously when you play this and you play this in a group, of friends, which you know, friends you want to help out. So, when you do this, you also let them see what's going on through your mind, and you can both analyze the turn and be very much like, I'm gonna, okay, so yeah, I don't know why I was doing that hand. I mean, I wasn't really thinking there, um, can't remember what was in it, but you know, I would, you know, um. Play Roar, get Colossus, or Colossus, and then get the uh, Kaleidoscope, and then some of the Unicorn, and then maybe shoot it into to something else, uh, like a Valk, just draw two cards or something, I don't know, whatever. Um, so I would explain that, and then my opponent would be like, okay, so you did this, this, and this, for this reason, could you have done this slightly differently, um, just to sort of, um, you know, change things up again. So that's one way to do it, show your opponent's cards and talk about your turns. Um, it helps you really sort of break down the game, move by move. The second thing we used to do a lot was we used to stack our decks. Now I know it sounds like cheating, but we would, say if we were looking for a dubious card in the side deck, um, for example, well you know, one of them, it's really just a standard side deck, I've got a bit up here, but let's go with these two cards. So, say I was playing against Shadows, or whatever, I would play a game where they open up the really, say they're playing Secret Village Spellcaster, so they're playing that. I would then open with Dance Princess in my hand, my open hand, and I would then see how good it was in the situation. Or I would maybe open with this guy, the Zephyr guy in my hand, just to see how good he is in the situation, just to help me, you know, because with, with the Zephyr guy, obviously you can just boop, tribute that and shoot it and then summon Trish. As an example, you know, or you can summon this, and you can play spell cards. Um, so yeah, you, you just test these these out in that situation, see how they perform, and away you go. So that's another thing you can do, you can stack your deck. Now, like I say, it sounds like cheating, you're not going to always op open that up the way. So, instead of stacking it to the top, stack it somewhere in the middle. Stack it at the bottom, see how it performs there, see how your deck performs, you know, X cards taken in and out. Um, and again, it helps you analyse the matchup, and what to do in the situation it helps you learn ways of playing around it. And the final thing we used to do, and we still do this one, um, which is going to bring me into my last minute of conversation, I know I'm speeding up, I just want to get it within that 10, um, is when you play, we used to we used to play with four people around a table. So I would be playing, I'm playing obviously Necros, my friend would be playing Cleforts, somebody would be playing Yang Zings, and the fourth player playing Heroes, for example. We would then play, play a match against first officers, and then we would swap decks around the table, and then we'd swap decks in a different way. So we're always playing a different deck. We were playing against the same people, but we're always playing a different deck. So until we played every deck against every deck, that would be it. And then we would then swap opponents. So it's call me player A, B, C, D. I'm playing player D. I would then go and play player B and C and D, and then I'll play player C. So we'd do that with every deck. I mean, we still do that to an extent now, but. Um, yeah, uh, as I was getting on to that, uh, nowadays uh, I'm a little bit less competitive, I'm a lot more casual now. So my playtesting is mainly done online uh, when my laptop works. It's not working. So, yeah, uh, I still try and get as many games in as I can, but my plan for this tournament, because I, I this is like, literally picked this up two weeks ago, so... I'm not really confident on the deck. I didn't really play a lot of it when it first came out. And yeah, like I say, I'm not 100% confident on it. So my plan was to play 300 games, you know, online and in real life. I played six. So, <laughs> so yeah, obviously, real life's really sort of taken over at some certain points. Obviously, my laptop breaking was kind of a shame and, and such. But yeah. So how do you guys play test? That's the question. Uh, leave a comment and uh, always 
like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks now.